Hi everyone, this is RNG. Good day off. I want to do now everybody day. Um, I hope not do well. That can only apply to Nigerians outside Nigeria. Because uh, the people inside Nigeria it it will be a thing of um, selfishness or something like a mockery for you to ask the Nigerians in Nigeria if they are doing well because we know they are not doing well um, normally everyone we get many things to talk about Nigeria the Nigeria of today but everybody they talk in your own from your own aspect, from your point of view. Um, I know say so many people believe say so most people who come out to talk on social media, they uh, they come out because they want people to view their content so that they can be paid by the YouTube or Facebook, Instagram, whatever platform they are using. It's true, but there are a few persons who come on social media to speak regarding things that are going on, things that are not okay, who doesn't really care about the money because it takes you to monetize your um, your page before you can earn money from it. So most people don't really care about the monetary aspect of it. As long as we are not doing a comment this case and uh, we are not showing up body uh, just like the ladies show up uh, every part of their private body uh, for men and for people to know be addicted to it keep watching so that they make their money the content we drop sometimes is not content that uh, people really um, like because there are few people who like the truth when you drop the truth, so a lot of um, this is there's probability that um, a lot of people are not going to appreciate it. A lot of people won't come around. It won't be shared across social media because you are not, you know, trying to force people to be okay when they're not okay. Because like comedy and other things, like you know, other things women are men do not just to make people feel all right those things uh, don't really solve problems rather they just you know pain your problems and they make you feel good for a while while the problem is always there but like us we come out to speak the things that are happening in our environment so that we can look for solution it's quite unfortunate that um most of the things we are like sometimes uh, we individually we don't have the the capability to actually solve these problems but collectively if we can join hands together to look into it i believe all these problems will be solved in due time now what am i talking about a few weeks ago, a few days ago as a sunday past Sunday because today is our night of uh, June 2020 on Sunday um, there was um, an attack in um, um, in Nigeria attacking the church at the Ogun State if I'm not mistaken there was an attack in the church that led to the um, loss of about 50 something lives this is right in the church where people are worshiping serving God and men and men came into the church you no know, they um, started shooting and uh, they shoot at a lot of people some people died and uh, some are injured critically injured and um, that is the situation you no. Know? It's painful that uh, a man like Lai Muhammad will come on social media to tell you Nigeria everything is alright. Nigeria and what people post on social media are lies. 
that Nigeria is peaceful, Nigeria is alright, the uh, security, everything is okay. Because something like this happened, happened to his own child or his own relative. Because it's only when it happens to them that they believe things are not alright. But as long as it's happening to the poor masses, everything is alright. You know, that's the kind of uh, system we found ourselves in. Now, for for some of us who are privileged to you know um, travel out of the country or have found refuge in other country or are doing well, um, most of us we um, by the grace of God we already attained uh, um, um, Western citizenship. So, we uh, some people might say, um, after all, I'm, I've come, I've left Nigeria, so I'm not going back to that country. So whatever the country likes, let it be. You know, whatever they like, they should turn the country into. But the thing is, uh, your home is your home. Like I always tell people, even if I get a citizenship today in a Western world, it's just a documentation. I am full blood, full flesh Africa, Nigerian to be precise. So no matter, even if I have three um, Western, uh, European, American, um, Asia citizenship today, it still don't change the fact that I'm a Nigerian. It only gives me a privilege. It is my access of traveling, but it doesn't change who I am. That's the fact which many people don't understand. It doesn't change you, who you are. When they, when someone see you as a black man, they know you are a black African. No matter where you are born, no matter where you are born, you are an African. So we have to let that sink into our brain. And our home, we alone can put our home in order. Of course, we understand that uh, the role which the Western world are playing in continuing sustaining chaos in Africa because when there is chaos in Africa the Western world they um, benefit from all this so they would rather prefer to keep you no know, um, finding devising a means for our leaders to continue to sustain all this trouble so that they can you know, get their own uh, benefit from it but wisdom means wisdom if you don't have it, the Bible says, ask God for wisdom. No man is a slave to any man, except you subject yourself to be a slave to someone. The same way the white people were created, the same way God created us. We have our own life. We have God give everybody everything they need to survive on earth. It's quite unfortunate that we are living in the kind of world whereby it has become the mugu for gamma eat so you depend on the downfall of another man for you to rise so that is the kind of situation we found ourselves here on earth and uh, it's quite unfortunate i swear that the african leaders they um, i hate to use this word that they have their brains in their anus but all this can change I just can change because when you keep a lady elderly men in position, they have nothing to lose because they look around, their lives is already gone. No? They just want to acquire a lot for their um, reputation. Just like Tinubu tell me, what does Tinubu want? He has he has stolen a lot of money. So the man is so fucking rich. So his children they are all doing very well. What else does he need? He just wants to be president for that title to be added to his name that Botinubu was also a president. No, none of them really care about you. It is painful to have uh, young men, young guys who should be thinking about how to make the country work. They are there clapping for all those criminals. They are there clapping for the people who brought us to where we are today. You look at APC, looking at PDP. What's the difference? It's the same criminal here. They just know. They just split each other. 
It's still the same set of criminals which you suffer the abuse of um of of, of the, the abuse you suffer for like seven years. You still want to suffer the same abuse for another eight years again. You now in this article and uh, Tinubu. So tell me what's the difference between these two people? That's no difference. We have young men who are running and we say they don't have structure. That means we still not right enough for liberation. Nigerians, we still not ripe enough. We still don't uh, want to be delivered. We still don't need salvation. Just part of the fact that a lot of us cry, a lot of our people cry because of the hardship and the pain, the insecurity inflicted on our, our people, it looks like we still not, not ready yet. We still enjoying the undemocratic and barbaric system of which we be suggested to by all these criminals we call leaders. It's a painful thing. You know, when the PC were, um, they were planning their primary, when I look at it, I saw a Bakari, a pastor, popular pastor in Nigeria, Bakari, who was part of the uh, presidential aspirant. He said, God said he is going to be the next president of Nigeria. Fine. I told my colleague that, I told um, one, um, a man who, like a father to me i respect him so much we live to uh, he's my neighbor and we we're discussing i told him man i'm a christian he knows very well i'm a christian i told him if any christian leader should come up not even in primary in presidential race on the election day and if i'm privileged to vote that day i'm not going to vote for any religious leader i'm not going to vote for any geo he said, why? I said, because they will be more terrible than these criminals we're looking at. We, we, we wish that these criminals continue to lead us for a, instead than a, a religious leader to lead us in Nigeria. And he asked me why. I said, look at um, Christianity. We have thousands of thousands of GOs not even we should be up to a million in nigeria only in nigeria and we have every corner in nigeria you have church and what are these churches preaching pray your tithe pay your offering sow seed first fruits miracle money there is a system where you can just sow all those tithe and offering and you'll be rich this is what they preach now, and all of them they operate individually no one is controlling them they said they are serving Christ Christ is one but these people have been able to divide Christ into different parts now they now preach different Christ each churches in Nigeria preach different Christ and the church is so divided, even more than the country itself. So tell me, if you make one religious leader, a leader, a president in Nigeria, what are you going to get? More division in the country. Now look at, most of those religious leaders in Nigeria, they all have, I think they pass the level of one private jet right now. Most of them have three private jets, and most of them have schools, most of them have hotels, most of them they build a lot of, you know, especially let me talk about the school and the hospital. These people, they build all this uh, infrastructure, but not for the poor, not for the less privileged. When Jesus Christ came, Jesus Christ was concerned about the poor. As a matter of fact, the Bible says he wept when he saw 
how these people were um, living like sheep without shepherd. Jesus Christ wept, seeing how human being has become vulnerable, not just to demonic attack, but also to hungry. People has eaten the attitude of selfishness, that even if you have more than you need today, you still don't care about the less privileged. You, what you think about is how to take the little, the less privileged have added to yours in the name of tithe and offering. And then you tell me people with such heart who are so mean to others, you want to bring them into government, thinking that they're going to do better. Never. They're never going to do better. The Christianity in Nigeria is not, there is nothing good to write about them. These religious leaders, not one single thing good to write about them. They are all selfish. As a matter of fact, if Christ was like that, I don't think Christianity would go far. <coughs> Christ was never like that. If personally I have not encountered Christ, if personally I don't have something to test my own personal testimony, which no pastor gave it to me, I did it myself. No pastor led me to it. I called God, I prayed, and God gave me a testimony that I can never forget for the rest of my life. This is something I was denied of. But after my prayer, everything, God made it possible for me. You see, this is the testimony that keep me going. Because if I don't have this testimony, if this testimony wasn't there, I tell you by now, I would have believed that truly there is no God. All we have is just selfish men who want to manipulate people. To believe what are lies. But truly there is God. But we just have selfish men and women. We don't care about the sheep of Christ. Jesus said to Peter. Do you love me? Peter said yes. He said feed my lambs. He did say. You should feed off the lamb. He said feed them. He didn't say you should feed yourself from them. But today what we have, the shepherd they said the lamb, you can take care of yourself, do whatever you like, as long as you pay your tithe and offering, I don't give a fuck. That is what we have today. Where you see um, religious leaders, they are busy buying private jets, buying the most expensive cars, moving around with convoy tell me you as a really as a geo you moving around with soldier police mobile police and what about the less privilege that is exactly what we saw at that catholic church that is exactly what we saw and tomorrow you still see you still see people gathered in a place in this city they are doing church. If all these religious leaders we have in Nigeria, if every one of them could come out, I tell you, religion, Christianity in a little cover up to um, forty five percent of the of Nigerian population. Yeah, if all these religious leaders. Could let the people know that there is only one God and only one Christ. So there is no need for us to be preaching different Christ. Let's come together and speak the truth. Let the people know that God will never fix our country. Let the people know that God will never choose a leader for us. Let the people know that we've had for so long, but it is time to return back to Christ. Let them know that God will never do anything beyond what we can do. 
as long as Nigeria is concerned, it is our responsibility to make it work. God is never going to send anyone from heaven to make Nigeria work. And not until all these religious leaders, they come together and bring the church together. Let everyone know the truth. Not one single pastor can change Nigeria as long as Nigeria is. If you like make Oye Dikbo the president of Nigeria, it's going to be worse. It's going to do worse. Because they build their structure on lies. They keep feeding the people with lies. There is no way you, a country that pays tight, can be better than a country that pays tax. There is no way, not here on earth, there is no way that can happen. The pastors you pay tight to, they don't pay tax because it, uh, 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 NGO organization, they don't pay taxes to government. So that's why you see that they have so much money you know, to live the kind of life they want to live for themselves and their family. Everything, you, you, this, this, they make sure they squeeze you, squeeze money out of your pocket to build a structure. And at the end of the day, the structure is in their name their children and their wife so it look is it just not it look like it, the fact is you labored in vain you labored for a man there is so much to Christianity what we have right now the pastors we have they are just money making machine they make money None of them really care about the souls like they say. If Satan can preach this word of God, the fact that someone tell you in Jesus' name doesn't really mean he mean it. Anyone can say in Jesus' name. Lucifer can say in Jesus' name. Have you not seen a situation maybe in your dream and you being faced or you being badly with a, a kind of a personality in your dream and you keep shouting, Jesus, Jesus, and not it happen. The power is not in Jesus. The power is in the understanding, the revelation of Jesus. Like he said to Peter, he said, upon this revelation, not upon the name, upon this revelation, you first have to get the revelation of who Christ is. Not the name. There is a person who Christ is. If you don't have the revelation of who Christ is, if you like, take a very big speaker and a microphone, scream the name Jesus, nothing is ever going to work. So don't think when they gather you in the church, the second associate, you take out the last cash you have in your pocket and you sow it. And they tell you, in social time, you're going to be this, you're going to be that. You keep shouting, Amen, in Jesus' name, Amen. Don't think something happened. Nothing happened, you just be food. It's time for we, Africans, Nigerians, to wake up. We can't continue recycling the same method we can continue following the same way that has yield no result for us at least let's think wise for once let's think like the white men for once the reason why they have results a positive result because whatever you do you always have a result it could be positive or negative so the reason why they have positive result is because They've failed several times. They've had negative reports, results several times, but they never gave up. They keep changing strategies. They keep changing strategies. It's only in Africa we see that we follow one single way for years that has never yielded result one day. We keep following that way. We don't want to change strategy. If you don't change strategy, you keep getting the same result over and over again. 2023 is coming now. It's election time. Look at the money Atiku spent 
to get the uh, PDP um, candidate nomination. And look how the money, um, um, what is his name again? Um, um, uh, I'm, uh, I made uh, the guy in APC, the man that won the APC uh, primary, Tinubu. Look how the amount of money that man spent to buy other, to buy the delegate and the other aspirant for them to step down for him. You think if that man come into power the first six years, you think that man is going to do any shit for us? You think that, that man is ever going to think about you? Look at what happened in Togate. That proved that these people, they value money more than any other person, apart from their own families and friends. They don't care. So if we make that mistake, it's painful to see thousands or millions of European guys, youths, are clamoring for this criminal, Tinubu. It's painful. Because they know, anyway, for those people, because I believe majority of them, they are ignorant. Because they are not educated to understand that life is not about now. Life is about the future. You, any man who always think about himself alone, is, is, is stupid. Because you have to always think about your children. You have to think about your grandchildren. Because if you don't make things right now, the same problem, the same begging, the same situation you faced, your children, your grandchildren might face that same situation because you didn't play your role very well. The reason why we come first is to make the ground palatable for those who will come before, after us. Why are we so selfish? Why? Why can't we just help our brothers? Why can't we just look at ourselves as one and help each other? Why are we being so selfish? Why? It's a painful thing. I urge every Nigerian, for those of us who have the privilege, the opportunity to vote, let's vote wisely. 5,000 Naira is never going to change your life. 5,000 Naira can't feed you for two days, not to talk of eight years. Eight years. You can feed with 5,000 Naira for eight years. You can sell your children for eight, for 5,000 Naira. For the whole eight years, it's, it does, it's not normal. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Let's do the right thing. And we'll get the right result. So that we can be happy again. There are young aspirants out there. You don't need to know this person. There is Kisli Mogalu. There is um, um, uh, um, Shore. Peter Obi is there. Let's look for people who we know can carry this thing. Not this old set of criminals. There is a way that leads to fire. Every time we keep fighting, we keep shouting, regretting that we are suffering. But when it is time to change direction, you continue to walk on that same path that has led you to suffering. For years, you don't want to change direction. And at the end of the day, you come and start crying, screaming that you're suffering. And you are the one keep putting yourself in that suffering. If we don't do something, nothing ever going to change. Let's do something. This RONG. I'm urging my brothers and sisters. I'm urging every Nigerians. In Nigeria, across the world, if you have a family, you have the PVC, let's make it make use of it wisely. Forget about Atiku, forget about um, uh, um, uh, what is his name? Um, I mean, uh, Tinubu. Forget about those guys. Let's focus on the new generation and turn Nigeria into a country people we want to go to, into a country where you will go. And be satisfied. You'll be secure. Not this 
Nigeria we have today, not this full and new republic we have today. No, this is not this is not a country. This is a surviving war zone. We don't want to live in that kind of area. We don't want to live in that kind of situation. We don't want to live in that kind of territory. Nigeria is fast becoming like Afghanistan. We don't want to live in them in in in, in an anarchy system like what we have right now. We want a better life. We deserve it. We deserve better life. Nigerians, we are creative. You have young Nigerians without the help of government, without the help of anybody. They are manufacturing cars. They are building aeroplane. They are building all kind of things. If all this were happening in Western world, the government would quick pick these guys and train them up and sponsor them and make them so, um, useful for themselves and for the society. But in Nigeria, what do we do? We keep people like that. We keep people who can manufacture ammunition. We jail them. People who can make things work. We put them in jail while we release criminals. What kind of country is that? How will you tell me such country will ever make it right? No country was made like that by default. Men turn it into something else. It's painful to see that the only woman aspirant who came out in APC sold herself to Tinubu just for money. And you will come out and say, women, gen gender equality. You come out and say, women are not be given power. And meanwhile, you selling yourself out. Let's make this right. Let's make things right. This is the time. Don't follow the money. What you need. We Nigerian what we need. I told someone a long time ago. We don't need so much from the government. We just need road and light. Education. And health care. That's all we need. We will take care of ourselves. That's all we need. Because we are born. Created. Hustlers. We hustle. We don't care. We make things happen. Go to UK. Go to Canada. Go to America. Come to Europe. Go to Asia. Nigerians are across the world. They are making things happen. The Western world, they are so much. They, 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 they just don't believe how we can soon change situations around. How that we can soon change economic around. They like us because we make the economic boom, but just that their racist attitude can never allow them free their hands with us. But behind the scene, they are proud of us, but they can make it open. They can make it open. I'm urging every single Nigerian, please, please. Please, ignore their 5,000 euro. They might try to make it 10,000. Ignore it. 20,000. Ignore it. 30, 40. Ignore the cash. Tell them the future matter. Let's see how our votes would count if we all can stand for the right. Let's see how they will be able to manipulate the vote. Go for Shuwere. Go for Mogalu. Go for Peter B. Any of this theory we believe can do something. I don't belong to anyone. I have never met any of these people and I don't even plan to meet them for such situ um, negotiation. All I care about is make Nigeria great. All I care about is make a son great. That is all I care about. There shouldn't be beggars. There shouldn't be people living below a minimum standard people should be fine living well this is all I agitate for this is all I call for not because I'm jobless I just feel it's the right thing to do to speak to my brethren let's reframe our mindset 
from this evil doing, selling out ourselves and our generation for just 5,000 error. We deserve better than that. You deserve better than that. God bless you and stay blessed.